On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we have record ships at anchor off U.S. ports, massive backlogs in terminals. But have no worry, the government's here to help. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCagliano, Chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science at Campbell University, former Merchant Mariner, and an adjunct instructor of Maritime Industry Policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Okay, I didn't think I was going to do a video this week, because not to lie, I've been out there a little bit too much this week. I did an interview yesterday with the guys at Freight Waves TV. It was great to do that. I had not done that before, so that was a, a real treat to do that. Uh, I have just done a video on the NTSB report on the Golden Ray, uh, followed it up with an article on G Captain. And I'm sure that my face is up all over dark boards at the NTSB today. So why, why not continue that run? Let's talk about the government here and their actions. So a report came out, and I read it on Twitter from a very reputable source, and I've heard of multiple sources is that the government is preparing to basically intervene into the issue here, particularly the anchorage and the number of ships off the port of LA and Long Beach. Now, as we all know, this has been growing immensely. This is marine traffic showing you that anchorage off the port of LA and Long Beach. And if you zoom out here a little bit more, you'll see ships just milling about here, just sailing around because they don't want to come into the anchorage. And if you go out even further, you just see ships coming in here one after another after another, just coming in the long line. And if you go out and look at the long line across the Pacific, you start to see those vessels coming in here. And the rumor that's going around, and again, I, I take that source as valid, is that the Biden administration wants to come in and do a couple of things. They want to start 24 seven operations at the port of LA and Long Beach. Uh, they want to eliminate pier pass fees uh, to uh, get more trucks and, and, and rail in to the ports. And then they want to find truckers, find truckers. This is by the way, Truck Appreciation Week. Thank you truckers, we appreciate everything you do. But the US government now wants to find you if you miss your gate appointment because you're not there on time. So. This is, has not been confirmed, but we're hearing about it coming in. But I want to touch on this for a couple of reasons. Number one, let's step back here for a minute and look what is going on. So if you do not follow John McCowan on LinkedIn, you should. Uh, he does reports all the time. John just came out with a great book on the leading innovators in the maritime industry over history. I'm going to do a review of it for the National Maritime Historical Society, Sea History, can't wait to do it. I'm gonna try to get him on my channel here, do a talk with him, I think it'd be a lot of fun to talk with John. But I mean, he's talking about the fact that the breathtaking second quarter 21 is container shipping nets reached 28.6 billion. If you want quantitative data, John man right here, he's talking about that net income. Look at that income coming in. Now, notice how I talked about this yesterday on Freight Waves, how shipping industry is on the cusp of profits all the time. It's margins, the margins are really small. Well, not since second quarter of 20 have we seen this level of margins go in. This is in millions of US dollars. In other words, this 10,000, is not $10,000, it's $10 billion. So you're talking about over $60 billion in this. Go to his other report, which does uh, a monthly look at US ports. And he looks at the number of containers coming in. You can see those dips in there from early 2020, massive spikes since then. And then he breaks down uh, reports here. He's got a, a chart in here that you, there is, that talks about uh, July TEUs in the ports, the July percentage change, the three month TEU, the three month change, and looking at, 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 at last time uh, uh, over, over the previous year looking at it, and you can just see the growth of this container. I mean, I mean, containers are just booming. Add to it, this report that came in here, this is the port of, uh, this is a Bloomberg report on G-Captain, uh, talk about the port log jam. The port log, log jam is enough containers to cross half the United States, half the United States. Uh, we've got 66, 65 vessels in port, if you're not following the Marine Exchange on Twitter, uh, about every day they update uh, exactly how many ships are there. You can go to the Port of LA and the Port of Long Beach where you're to put the numbers together. Marine Exchange of Southern California puts it all together for you if you want to follow it. 
But here they're talking about the number of vessels and the number of, of, of containers they're talking about right here. And, you know, it, it's just the numbers are, are really, it, it's hard, it's hard to, to put your head around it. Both ports have handled a monthly average of about 862 containers inbound this year. Inbound, not outbound, inbound this year. Uh, it talks about here that the uh, flotilla either anchored outside the port or drifting further offshore until an anchor supply is available as a combined capacity, combined capacity, 400,000 containers. That's how many containers are afloat. Then you get this from, uh, actually this is a story right here from the mayor CEO, where he's talking about the fact that out here is, uh, I believe the story, actually maybe this story right here. Sorry, I jumped ahead here on the story right here. But he's basically arguing that there's nine to 10% of containers are basically afloat. Oh, here it is. Currently, nine to ten percent of global container capacity is sitting outside the ports, waiting to discharge. The problem is particularly acute at Long Beach Port in Los Angeles, where some sixty container ships are waiting to discharge. Nine to ten percent of all global container capacity is basically at anchor. And to put that into context, this is Alpha Line's top one hundred container carriers again. Everything below Zim uh, or maybe PIL really is, is insignificant in a large matter. They're less than 1%, even though some of these companies are directly in US transport, like Matson way down here. But if you look at this, you get to see exactly 6,286, uh, 68 ships, excuse me, 25 million container capacity, 25 million. And he's talking about 10%, he's talking about 2.5 million containers are jammed in here right now basically waiting to be offloaded. And then you look at this story, and this is what this other story details here, but you start looking at Maris. Maris, which handles one in five containers worldwide, now expects full year underlying earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. This is the EBI, EBITDA. Sometimes you just see EBITA without the depreciation of 22 to $23 billion. They just upped that from their previous estimate of 18.19 to 19.5 billion. No, we were wrong in our estimate. We were off by three billion to four billion dollars. They're gonna make that much more money. It is insane the amount of money they're making. Absolutely insane the amount of money they're making on this. But I want to go back to this story that's coming out that the government is here to help. So again, I'd love to use marine traffic and you're looking at these vessels, but let's come in here to the terminal for a second. I'm gonna show you the terminal here at LA and Long Beach. And to understand how containers operate, especially on the West Coast, you've got your ships in anchor, you bring them into the terminal here. So for example, here's your terminal right here. Here's your vessels lined up here. And again, this is Google Earth, so those vessels are not exactly there. So the MSC Kalina's here, uh, GSL uh, Nicoleta's there, the SFL Maui, APL Raffle, CMCJ Florida. You see the gantry cranes right here operating. Again, th this vessel is actually not here. These are here. These gantry uh, cranes move. And then you have this lay down area here. You've got rail line back here. You've got the bridge across here that goes in there. Same thing across the way. You've got lay down area stacks. These containers are stacked multiple heights. But what makes LA Long Beach so enticing right here is the highway system and that rail system that comes out, you're jumping right onto the main highway system. You've got ships all in here, all throughout this area right here. Same thing over here in Long Beach. You can basically hop out and go. What the rumor is, is that they want LA Long Beach to go to three ships. Right now they're on two ships. So in other words, they want 24 seven operations going on. That does not solve the problem. What the Biden administration and what they're trying to do here is diminish the number of ships out in the anchorage by putting the containers on the dock. Understand something, that does no good. You can't chocker block the yard, the terminal with containers. You're gonna slow th things down more. If you have to multiple move containers, that's a problem. Plus some of the containers on these ships are reefers, refrigerated containers, which need plugs, needs power, and you have a finite amount on land that you can do this. So you just can't start offloading containers, dumping them onto the terminal here if you can't get them out the gate. If you can't get them on trucks, on chassis, on railways, that's not what's going to solve this problem. Yeah, it, the short term, 
it makes the marine exchange data look better. Hey, we're not at 65 ships in anchor. We're the Biden administration. We're the presidential administration. We've got it down to 35. We are helping you. Means squat, squat. If that material is sitting there on a terminal, it's as good as being afloat on a vessel. Let me be clear. It, it, it does not matter. And matter of fact, it makes it worse because now that ship that's sitting there is heading back to Asia to load up with more containers to bring back to you. And again, this situation is in LA Long Beach. And if you go out and, and look at different areas, like let's go off the port here of Savannah. Here's Savannah, you have an anchorage off Savannah right now where ships are lined up off the port of Savannah waiting to get in. Uh, go off Houston even though you're gonna see a lot of red here because the red represents tankers, you still see some green in there for container ships. And if you wanna help, let me show you the place you help. This is San Francisco. This is San Francisco in the port of Oakland. You can see right here in San Francisco Bay, we've got ships in here. This is the terminal in the port of Oakland right here. This is the terminal in the port of Oakland. So we've got ships all lined up right here, but Oakland is, has got access to rail. You can see rail right in here. You can see highway right there, it's all good. The problem that Oakland has, it has finite space. Look at this, you're, you're right up against residential in area. there's nowhere to go. If only, if only there was a huge flat space that you could develop into a container yard in the port of Oakland. Hmm. If only there was a huge flat space not being used anymore that you can use. That is the Naval Air Station of Alameda. NAS Alameda. NAS Alameda is no longer used as a Naval Air Station. Uh, probably the most famous thing about the Naval Air Station Alameda in recent times, it's where the Mythbusters blew everything up. If you ever saw container ships in the background, they were right here, right along the side. This would be ideal. It would have to be dredged. It would have to be developed. You would have to put a highway rail bridge probably linking in over here of some kind. But massive laydown area you can develop. You can push off into the bay, but again, California's gonna be really tough doing that. But if you wanna talk about how to alleviate this in the short term, there's very little you can do beyond, let's get more truck drivers out there, let's get more chassis out there, let's improve the rail system, let's make it more affordable to be a truck driver in this country. Again, truck driver appreciation, we appreciate you guys, but you know, basically telling them, hey, you're going to get fines if you miss your gate appointment is not really being nice. We need substantial infrastructure. Understand, one of the unique things about the port of LA and Long Beach is the ships that come in here offload nearly their entire cargo. Nearly everything comes off these, this boat. These ships don't tend to go up and down the coast to Tacoma, to Oakland, and then to LA and Long Beach too much. They come in there and they dump everything. And then they load up and go back. And most containers ships offload maybe 20% of their cargoes when they come into ports. When they come into LA and Long Beach, it's 70, 80% most times. Uh, that is a unique thing, which puts a big push and stress on the LA Long Beach system. And that's the problem we're seeing. Now, of course, you're routing other ships through the Panama Canal, but even if you come down here to the Panama Canal, come in off the anchorages off the Panama Canal, you got ships waiting to go in. And the Panama Canal, again, is constrained by the, the limitations of the canal. When the canal did its upgrade, opened the lane in 2016, three years after the introduction of the Maersk Triple E, the big ultra large container vessels, they can't handle them because that canal was designed back in 2005, 2006. And the biggest container ships envisioned at that time were 12,000 boxes, which is what the canal can handle. So we find ourselves with a massive infrastructure issue going on. And that's why the infrastructure bill is so important. It needs to be developed. We need to improve road and rail. We need to develop ports. We need to improve the ability to move containers. That's what needs to be done. Ordering the port of LA Long Beach to go three shifts, same thing with Savannah, same thing with all these other ports, doesn't do squat. Makes politicians feel better, it will diminish the number of ships that are showing up in Marine Exchange daily update, but it is not what needs to be done. And again, I said this on Freight Waves yesterday, and I'll say it again, 
eight months into this administration, we have no maritime administrator. We have no single person who should be the voice of the American maritime industry from the government who's advocating a policy. And with that, I will leave it at there. So if you enjoyed this video, and again, I don't know how anybody enjoys my videos. They're, they really are not positive in many ways because I keep highlighting issues. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos where I can go off against other federal agencies and really endear myself to everybody in the federal government. Uh, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment uh, or, or notice sympathy. I, I really appreciate that, that's nice. Uh, and stay tuned for my next video. And should I disappear mysteriously? I wonder why. <laughs> All right, next report. This is Sal, signing off.